My name is Dr. Lauren Schwartz. I am a clinical neuropsychologist at St. Louis University. In around 2014, the Chess Foundation graciously provided the university a grant to investigate an interesting research question that the club had. Um, and so after that point in time, they graciously funded a research endeavor to look at memory and chess playing. We are looking at older adults, ages 65 and older, who have experienced some memory loss, but that their day-to-day -day functioning is still intact. And the question that the Chess Foundation wanted to know is if learning chess when you have memory problems can slow down or help with those problems in some way. So we've been actively recruiting for the study since approximately 2014, um, but each participant devotes two years of time to being in the study. Preliminary results we have on the neuroimaging data, which has shown interestingly that individuals have experienced an increase in the thickness of their brain cells in what's called the temporal parietal area of the brain in the left side of their brain, which that area is responsible for things such as visual spatial processing and aspects of memory. So that preliminary finding is very exciting. So stay tuned though for the neurocognitive data. So interestingly, there isn't a whole lot of information specific to chess, and that's why we're excited because chess is such a unique game in all of the cognitive skills that it requires. It requires working memory. It requires short-term memory, visual spatial planning, reasoning skills. So the, the complexity of the cognitive skills that go into chess are very unique. A lot of the other studies have looked at things like crossword puzzles, word searches, that kind of stuff. So clearly, while beneficial to a certain degree, not as complex as the game of chess. And so really it, it recruits lots of aspects of brain functioning, which makes it so interesting. Um, and so potentially that could be what is helpful to our patients. Well, what we're hopeful is that, that we do see um, either we could hopeful would be two things. One would be that there are some improvements of aspects of cognition in our chess players over time. But in my business, another thing that is equally important is stability of cognitive skills over time, because we know that oftentimes memory problems can be progressive. And so if we see stability across the years that the participants are in the study, that would also be a positive finding for us. There have not been this large scale of carefully designed investigations that include neuropsychological, so cognitive testing in conjunction with neuroimaging. So we're really bringing to the table functional and anatomical data to answer the question if chess helps when we have memory loss. I think another unique aspect to this study is that they're learning chess in two ways. It's live chess play, so there's that psychosocial component to the study, so maybe helping improve mood, socialization, but then they're also playing on a tablet. So they're getting two aspects of the knowledge which we're hoping will be beneficial for this population. I, I view this as another recommendation for physicians and other memory care providers to be able to give to patients that there's no risks associated with it. It would be wonderful to be able to provide another lifestyle modifiable thing that people really can work on to help improve their memory functioning. You know, we don't have medica many medications in our arsenal right now to help with this. So I'm always of the opinion, let's throw as many things at the memory loss problem as we can. And if, if we get great results with this, this is a low stakes thing for people to be willing to try. You know, there's not a, a medication side effects associated with playing chess, you know, so that would be really great to be able to offer that as another thing for patients. Once we get COVID behind us, um, I think it would be really great to get both tablets into, for example, some of the independent living communities, um, some of the skilled nursing homes, and then also live chess play for them as well. I think that, you know, um, when folks are not able to interact, the computer piece is really great, but um, bringing people together, that's the one thing that we really have seen with this study is that, that, in, that, that human interaction, playing this game that frustrates and encourages them all at the same time has just been great. There's been friendships made in the study. So getting it out into the communities, I think would have to be a two prong approach, bringing education into senior centers, and then also teaching them how to do it by themselves on a computer platform, but then having groups so that they can get together. I think that's the most important piece, that human interaction.
I think that um, the most important thing that I'd like to say is one, thank you to the Chess Foundation for the opportunity to get to embark on a study like this that has never been done before. But I would certainly be remiss not to thank all of the hardworking individuals that uh, participated in getting this off the ground and running it on the day to day. So my co-investigator is Dr. Ted Malstrom. Our research nurse coordinator is Susan Brown. Our research assistant is Tom Malone. Um, we have uh, a numerous other neuropsychologists in the building that have been um, actively recruiting patients from their clinics. Um, but the people that I named really are, are the core members of the team.